What's up, everybody? Dr. Bonzo back again. Just finished doing a session for a pipeline program I'm associated with. For those of y'all who are pre-meds looking to get into medical school, check out Dr. Frank Jones and his, his pre-med solutions program. So just did a session on how to be a, a successful once you get into medical school. And you know what that means. I got dressed up for it. So time to do another quick hitting high yield review of a medical topic in five minutes or less. It's late. It's like nine o'clock at night. So let's just hurry up and get to it. We're talking about non-selective beta blockers today. So this has been on my mind a little bit because I just did a video on migraine prophylaxis recently, and we talked about um, beta, non-selective beta blockers being great medicines for preventing migraine headaches. We also talked about them a little bit when we talked about calcium channel blockers. Beta blockers work very similar to those centrally acting, acting calcium channel blockers I mentioned previously. So the beta-1 receptor in your heart at the AV node level speeds up your heart rate, speeds your contractility. So if you block that receptor, block that beta-1 receptor, lower heart rate, lower blood pressure, lower contractility. Um, non-selective beta blockers are ones that not only block beta-1 receptors, but block something else. And we have some that are non-selective and block beta-1 and beta-2 receptors. We have some that are non-selective and block beta-1, beta-2, and alpha-1. Remember, alpha-1 and beta-2 receptors are kind of interesting because they sort of tug a war against each other. Alpha-1 receptors typically make you constrict. So if you block those, you get vasodilation. Beta-2 receptors typically make you dilate. So if you block those, get a little bit of constriction. So um, either way, regardless of whether you're blocking alpha ones and beta twos or just beta twos, all those beta blockers also block the beta one. So they will always lower your heart rate and lower your blood pressure as well. So obviously blocking your beta receptors will lower your blood pressure and your pulse, like I mentioned, but there's a lot of other uses other than treating hypertension for beta blockers. And that's why test writers love to ask you about beta blockers, especially non-selective beta blockers. They're such cool medicines because you can use them for so many things. So in my count, there's at least seven good things that non-selective beta blockers work great for. Let's talk about them real quick. So again, real quick, just to review the mechanism of action and think about it. Those beta-2 receptors that I mentioned earlier not only cause vasodilation, they also can affect your peripheral conversion of, of thyroid hormone to the active form of it. They also can affect things like whether or, not you're, um, whether or not you have tremors and some other things we're going to talk about in just a second. So what else can we use them for besides hypertension? They're also, we mentioned in a previous video, obviously migraine prophylaxis. So using them you know, once a day to prevent migraine headaches, they work great for that, a recommendation. They're also great for treating essential tremor. So that beta-2 blockade will help prevent tremor. Um, they're an A recommendation for that. The only medicine that rivals non-selective beta blockers for treating essential tremor is a medicine called primidone which the trade name of that is mizoline. Non-selective beta blockers, it was interesting to find out, are actually banned um, from the Olympics. They're a performance-enhancing per performance drug, and the reason why is because archers or people you know, who do archery actually have used beta blockers to help keep their hands steady. So beta blockers are great medicines for essential tremor. Um, so there's five other things you can use it for, or excuse me, four other things you can use it for. So, so far we got hypertension, um, migraine prophylaxis, and essential tremor. You can also use it for other things that, uh, that you need to help you sit still, essentially. One of the common side effects of um, antipsychotic medications are, is a condition called akathisia. What that is, is people get a, a, what we call an extrapyramidal side effect of antipsychotic medicines that block the dopamine receptors, and people just can't sit still. Beta blockers are great for that. I've used that in that situation, and it works pretty quickly and is very effective. Other things you can use beta blockers for, if you think about the mechanism of action, it'll make sense. Um, it's great for an adjunct treatment for hyperthyroidism because the beta-2 receptors also help decrease that peripheral conversion of um, thyroid hormone to the active form. So if somebody has too much thyroid hormone floating around, beta blockers are great for symptom relief. Um, if you think about the mechanism of action of the non-selective beta blockers, blocking that beta-2 receptor and preventing dilation, you would think about anytime you have dilation of blood vessels and you want to decrease it, beta blockers are great for that, right? Think about that same thing when we think about esophageal varices. So patients that have cirrhosis and get esophageal varices from that, non-selective beta blockers are great for preventing those things from bleeding. Other situations that are very helpful as well, patients who have um, social phobia or performance anxiety, non-selective beta blockers are great for that as well. So for example, a patient who starts breaking out into a sweat, having that sympathetic nervous response system when they give a speech and they hate doing it, have them take a beta blocker right before they perform and they do great. Now, last thing is, how do you remember which beta blockers are which? In general, quick rule of thumb, if the, if the generic drug starts with the letters A through M, it's beta-1 selective. If the letter starts with N through Z, it's typically non-selective. Your two exceptions are carbetalol and labetalol. Those block beta-1, beta-2, and alpha-1. All right, that's it. Five minutes or less.